So far, for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's DLC, we have had exclusively third-party characters, with Piranha Plant as the one exception. Although, there is a lot of evidence that it was planned for the base game, and that would explain why. This is why our series so far has been exclusively third-party as well. But, that doesn't mean it has to be this way. Sakurai has stated that one aim of the DLC was to introduce new universes to Smash Bros and continue making it the biggest crossover ever, so it's reasonable to think that this third party exclusivity has mainly been because of that reason. Most of the big Nintendo series are in the game in some way already, unless they came out after Super Smash Bros Ultimate. That's why today's series is Astral Chain a new IP from Nintendo and Platinum Games that exclusively launched for Switch back in August of 2019. And hey, Smash 4's DLC ended on a Platinum character, so why not continue the trend? The obvious choice of fighter for Astral Chain is its main character, the Cadet, or Akira Howard, maybe? See, you can pick a gender for the main character, and whatever gender you don't go with becomes your sibling and is named Akira. This means that both the male and female versions of the cadet can be named Akira, and the actual MC doesn't have a name. Well, you give them one, but not an official canon name. So, Akira is the closest we can actually get. But, Akira isn't technically the MC, so you can see the issues with calling them that. For the sake of ease, I am simply going to refer to the player character as the cadet for the rest of this episode. So, how would the cadet play? Well, all of their standard attacks would use the X-Baton, Neuron's standardised weapon of choice. It can become a baton, a gun, and an axe that, to me, looks more like a club, but whatever. The Cadet's smash attacks would all use the axe form of the baton, while the rest of the standards, both ground and air, would be made up of a mixture of baton and gun moves. The grabs would follow this as well, however the Legion would appear here for a dual attack. Speaking of the Legion, to the surprise of nobody, that would be the Cadet's gimmick, and the Legion of Choice here is the Sword Legion, the Cadet's primary Legion and the one the player starts with. I contemplated allowing Legion swapping between all five Legions, but figured that would be a lot of extra work when one does just the same thing on its own. So how does the Legion come into play? Well it's pretty similar to how it works in the original game. The standard special summons the Legion, who will appear next to the Cadet. If you press the button as you're about to be attacked, you can get a perfect summon, which knocks opponents back a little. Pressing the special button again will cause the Legion to disappear. In this state, the Legion follows behind the Cadet and attacks when the player does, kind of like the Ice Climbers or our scene with Joker. However, pressing side special will have the Cadet throw the Legion forward, the distance depending on how long the button is held down for. In this mode, the Legion is more independent and will automatically attack opponents who get close to it. The Cadet and Legion are connected via a chain, and if the Cadet runs too far away, the Legion will be forced to follow. It's similar to Rosalina and Luma's situation, but the player doesn't input the Legion's attacks. If the player presses side special again, however, then the Legion will pull the Cadet towards them, and the two will re-enter their together state. This can be interrupted, however, if the player attacks the Cadet mid-move, or if an obstacle like a wall or floor gets in the way. The up special is similar to the side special, but angled upwards, and no need for the additional input. Think of it like the Ice Climbers up special, with the Legion going first and pulling the Cadet upwards afterwards. Lastly, the down special, which is the Sword Legion's specific move, the Slash. When the button is pressed, a circle and line appear in front of the player, and they can use the left stick to position the line any way they like within the circle. Pressing the button again will cause an incredibly powerful slash to occur that does a lot of damage. It isn't easy to pull off, but it is very punishing when it connects. You might be asking if there are really any negatives to having the Legion out, and the answer is… not really. However, to balance this, the Legion has a stamina meter like in their games. The meter will go down over time and drop quicker if they get hit. The only way to charge up this meter is to put the Legion away and let it rest. If the Legion gets knocked out as opposed to being put away manually, then the player will be forced to wait until it gets to its max stamina again before it can be summoned. All that's left now is the final smash, and this is the chain bind combo. The activation for this final smash has the cadets spin around and launch the Legion along the Z axis. 
Any opponents caught in the chain of the Legion will get locked in place, and then it will move to a cutscene where both the Legion and Cadet will pummel the trapped opponents in a combo before launching them off screen. So that's the Cadet. A weird mix of the Ice Climbers, Joker, Rosalina and Olimar. Pretty unique characters that can create a unique offshoot. So as we wrap up the fighter section, let's move to the alt costumes we could see, and as mentioned earlier there are two sex options for this fighter, male and female. The male one is the default while the female version will be the second alt. The third alt is a black male alt based on the raven armour, and likewise the fourth alt is this same design but on the female version. The remaining alts are all different though, with the third male alt being based on the red rescue set, the third female alt being based on the orange mechanic set, the final male alt being based on the green security set, and the final female alt being based on the white medic set. Now onto the stages, and Astral Chain has a few possible locations that could work. First is Sector 9 from Chapter 6. It's a level whose layout works well for Smash Bros with many bottomless pits and platform potential. It could even have variations with a clear sky and a thunderstorm variant. However, Sector 9 only appears in Chapter 6, and is aesthetically very different from the rest of the game, so it may not be the best representation. The next choice is the Neuron Headquarters, the most recurring area in the game, as most missions start you off there. This stage has plenty of potential for cameos with all of the other Neuron officers, however as a stage it's lacking. Most of the level is indoors, so the only set piece that would work in Smash Bros is the helipad, which is just a little boring when we already have stages like Foresight. No, the stage we decided had the most potential and best represented Astral Chain was Harmony Square, a recurring location inside the arc, specifically at the bridge during Chapter 9. The level starts at Harmony Square and players have two levels they can fight on, the bridge itself or the road below. While both areas are flats with walk-offs on either side, the area will need some slight editing to remove the buildings on either side, but that's doable. The bottom section can have walls periodically appear and disappear. These are contextualised as the physical stop barriers during a red light when trying to cross the road. In the background you can find various police officers fighting aberrations. Sometimes however, Olive, Brenda and Hal can also appear instead. Then in either variation you may spot Lappy speed past in the background of the stage, sometimes holding balloons but not always. This isn't all the stage has to offer though. I did mention it was based on chapter 9 after all. The stage is a transitional one, much like the reset bomb forest. The trigger for this change is Jenna Anderson, who will appear from a redshift portal on the lower centre of the stage. When she appears, the whole stage will shake and the floor will shoot up into the sky, taking all players up with it. The platform will continue to rise up and up and through a giant redshift portal, where players will enter the astral plane. This is the second half of the stage, and it no longer becomes a walk-off. It's still mostly flat, but there are floating platforms that move when certain switches are attacked. Cameoing in the background of this level are the nemesis variant of each legion, but the sword one. These four are watching the battle unfold in the background and may occasionally interact with the stage as hazards. The Arrow Legion will fire a host of arrows into the sky that rain down on one side of the stage. Players can tell which side by the white markers that appear on the ground. The Arm Legion will appear on one side of the stage and charge across the screen like a spinning top. The Beast Legion will jump to either the left or right of the stage and perform a howl, paralysing any foes caught in the blast radius. Finally, the Axe Legion will appear in the centre and slam his axe into the ground, creating a bomb that will explode and do major damage to anyone caught in its radius. The stage will eventually return back to Harmony Square, when another redshift portal appears in the centre and engulfs the whole stage. We think this stage works best as it gets both the blue and red colour themes of the game involved, covers two key locations and allows for some neat hazards, which are great for a simple stage. Considering it's a transitional stage, we had to think carefully about what music to add, as it would need to work in both settings. Thankfully, Astral Chain has a lot of bombastic battle songs for each of its areas, as well as upbeat anime-esque tracks that would match the vibe of Smash Brothers. Just give them a listen.
Now, I had the right idea with the Terry Classic mode, but I made it too complicated it seems, and I don't want to repeat the same mistake here. Sometimes the Classic mode doesn't really need to represent anything from the games themselves. It can just be themed around something, like how Roy only fights sword users and Master Hand, but we don't talk about that. And consider the cadet is a police officer and police officers exist to catch criminals, we're going to do just that. Catch those criminals is the name of this path, and it has the cadet face off against various dastardly villains before they can cause more damage. The first criminal on the list is the notorious leader of Team Star Wolf, Wolf O'Donnell, who is fought on Venom. The song Emergency plays in the background of this fight. Next is a duo of thieves and gluttons, made up of the jewelry snatching and garlic munching Wario and his equally large partner, self proclaimed king and food hoarder, King DDD. These guys are caught sneaking around outside Shadow Moses Island while the Aegis Research Institute theme plays. Next is a team of parasitic villains with Team Dark Samus. These three Dark Samus are all fought in the Astral Plane portion of Harmony Square, hazardless so the legions don't interfere. The music that plays here is the Invaders from Another World theme. From aliens to pirates, the cadet takes to the high seas to catch a notorious scaly pirate called King K. Rool. His fought on pirate ship while the theme Ark Maul plays in the background. The cadet is nearing the biggest bads of them all, but first, they need to clear through a bunch of minions, with Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings. These little generals are fought on Mushroom Kingdom U as the combat version of the Astral Plane theme plays in the background. And finally, the biggest bads in Nintendo make their appearance, as the cadet must square off against Bowser, Ganondorf and Ridley all at once at Harmony Square. This isn't the hazardless version of the stage, and the song's homunculus beta plays in the background. But wait! There is one more fight to go, and it's time to square off against the big bads of Super Smash Bros. itself, Master Hand and Crazy Hand. They are fought on the Omega form of Harmony Square, a platform floating above the arc, while Jenna Anderson's theme plays in the back. Take them down and secure peace in the world of Smash Bros. At least until the next fight happens. Now that all the villains are behind bars, it's time to round up all of the lost spirits, starting with the two fighter spirits. First is the Cadet, Male, and the Sword Legion. This is acquired by bringing peace through classic mode. The female version of this spirit is simply ball at the shop. The reason the Sword Legion shares the spirit is much like how Joker and scene share a spirit. They are both the fighters, so it makes sense. Next we have 9 spirits that can be collected via the spirit board, 4 of which are primary and 5 of which are support. The first 4 spirits are all based on the other legions that the cadet can gain throughout Astral Chain. First is the Arrow Legion an advanced primary attack spirit that gives the effect of shooting items power up. This legion is played by a red dark pit on Magicant, who prioritises his standard special and may randomly receive his final smash. Next is another advanced primary spirit, but this time of the grab variety. The arm legion offers its users throw power up and is played by a red Donkey Kong on New Donk City Hall Battlefield variant. Donkey Kong starts with a rocket pack equipped, and the lower floor is poisonous. Following this is the only support legion, a novice level spirit that offers impact run to its user. This spirit is played by Duck Hunt in its 8th ult, and is accompanied by two smaller Duck Hunts. This is a no holds back battle, so just give it your all. Finally the last legion, an ace level primary defense spirit which offers speed down when equipped, but makes up for this with 3 skill slots. The Axe Legion is played by Radiant Dawn Ike and has enhanced smash attacks, prioritising his neutral special and starts with both the Franklin Badge and Back Shield equipped. Now, talk about defence. This fight takes place on the Astral Plane part of Harmony Square. Now we are on to the non-legions, and we should first start with the folks over at Neuron, specifically its commander, Yosef. He seems like a good guy. He's an advanced support spirit played by a black Dr. Mario, and is accompanied by the female cadet dressed in their raven armour outfit on the bridge of Elden, hazardless. In this stage you must defeat Dr. Mario in the time limit to win, but he avoids conflict while being protected by the cadet. If you do defeat him however, his spirit offers item gravitation. Next are two ladies that you could easily spot in a crowd, 
Olive and Brenda as one novice level support spirit. The duo are played by a peach and a blue daisy. The former starts with a ray gun and the latter will slowly recover health over time. You fight the two on four side and their effect is improved escape from grabs. Next is the always recognisable and incredibly huggable police mascot, Lappy. This support spirit starts off as a female Robin on Midgar, but upon defeat a giant blue Isabel with enhanced speed appears, and this is where the true fight begins. Defeating Lappy gives the ability of unflinching charge smashes. Finally, our last member of Neuron, the elusive Howl. This novice support spirit is played by a yellow Rob and is attracted to items, specifically the daybreak pieces, so act fast. He's fought in the astral plane and offers floaty jumps. Only one spirit left and it's the legendary level primary spirit, and only one woman can represent this, Jenna Anderson. She's a neutral spirit who offers increased psi attacks and the only condition is to defeat her on Harmony Square. But that might not be as easy as it sounds. She plays a Zero Suit Samus and is accompanied by a giant purple King K. Rool. Not only that, when you defeat her, she comes back as a purple Dark Samus and gets an attack boost. And that does it for all the spirits and everything we could get in an Astral Chain Fighter Pass. But as always, it's time for the Mii Fighters, and this one is pretty easy. First is a Lappy costume for the Mii Brawler. Play as the mascot of justice and beat some sense into some no good punks. Another choice is the Neuron Officer look, which can work for both the Sword and Gunnami. They were the typical Neuron Officer outfit seen by the Cadet, but with an official Neuron cap. And that ends this episode of All Content. Let me know if you enjoyed it and who you want to see next. If Astral Chain does make it in, then it would be the first Nintendo series to get content in Smash Ultimate after the game's initial release, which is exciting. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet, and share this video around, it will help us greatly. A special thank you to all of our patrons on screen right now. And if you'd like to support us and get all the benefits, including an exclusive Discord channel, exclusive source gaming assets, early access to content, and the ability to suggest content for us to cover, then follow the link below. And with that, always remember to return to the source.